Okay, case uh, 19. So the curtain is slowly lifted on this nodule, which has a lot of blood in these dilated, almost aneurysmal vascular spaces with a background kind of nodular proliferation of smaller cells which, which have more nuclei, so they appear more blue from up here. We see these little vascular spaces throughout. Coming in, we can see little kind of bent small nuclei, kind of fibrohistiocytic is what I'm hoping they're going to turn out being, and maybe grabbing onto a little collagen at some corners, but certainly uh, just robust cellular proliferation, some multinucleated cells in there. Um, yeah. Kind of a dermatofibroma background, but a robust one, again, with tons of aneurysmal spaces, red blood cell extravasation. I think probably good for an aneurysmal dermatofibroma. Very good, yeah. This is a, a good case because this could really trip you up, especially if you only had a partial biopsy. Um, but um, also, you I mean, when there's a bunch of blood, I found that that it pathologists really tend to gravitate on the blood and the blood-filled spaces. I mean, it catches your eye, right? It's like right in your face. And then the first thought is, is it a vascular tumor? And I think a lot of pathologists uh, find vascular tumors challenging. Um, I find them challenging. I, I really like vascular tumors, and it's a particular area of interest for me, but I think they're pretty hard sometimes, um, even still after all these years. So, so I do see why people see that, and then they worry, oh, this is a vascular tumor. Um, and so that can, can cause angst, but you can have lots of things that have bleeding into them and can mimic vascular tumors at first. So I feel like schwannoma is a good example. It often has a lot of hemorrhage and people can sometimes start thinking of vascular tumors. And then this example, like you very rightly said, is a dermatofibroma with abundant hemorrhagic spaces. So what we could call an aneurysmal uh, dermatofibroma. Sometimes people use the term sclerosing hemangioma type. I don't really like that term, but you can, I've seen that used for things that look kind of aneurysmal or things that are hemosiderotic, hemosiderin rich, which often kind of coexist on a spectrum. Uh, but in any case, in the, in the olden days, people would use that term more. I, I tend to not use it personally, but if you hear sclerosing hemangioma in the setting of the skin, what it's referring to is actually a dermatofibroma with blood and or hemosiderin um, deposition, okay? But yeah, the, the large polypoid dermatofibromas sometimes are also problematic because we tend to not see them as often in derm path. We tend to see the smaller ones, right? And so sometimes though they can get very big and polypoid and protrude above the skin surface. Um, they can uh, ulcerate, that can be confusing. They can have blood-filled hemorrhagic spaces and you're even getting almost like a little bit of that Masson tumor, uh, papillary endothelial hyperplasia type of pattern in the middle of this uh, abundant fibrin, right? So again, it's a case where go away from those spaces and look at the rest of the stuff. And like you rightly said, it has this so-called fibrohistiocytic look of spindled cells and histiocytoid cells mixed together in haphazard arrangement, often with some, um, some multinucleated giant cells. You may get some entrapment of collagen at the periphery, a little bit of it here. It's not as dramatic in this case as in some. And over top of it, you can actually see epidermal hyperplasia with blunting or tabling of the reedy, uh, kind of the, that epidermal induction type change we see over dermatofibromas oftentimes. So don't forget to look at the epidermis. It can provide useful clues as well. Let me look at the other piece here. Yeah, I think this one's particularly hard too because it's polypoid and you're not, we're not often seeing polypoid dermatofibromas. So both clinically and microscopically, that can lead to confusion. I have definitely seen a particularly big, juicy, hypercellular looking dermatofibromas often have big dilated vessels like this. And, and plus the blood and hemorrhage, it can really make people concerned that what they're dealing with is something vascular or something not dermatofibroma. So uh, big, juicy, uh, uh, cell rich, I, I hate to say cellular because I usually use the term cellular dermatofibroma for ones that have big fascicles. But that term is, is kind of subjective and, and uh, people struggle over how and when it should be applied. But in any case, uh, yeah. I think also you could make the argument, this one does seem to have some kind of almost foamy or frothy cells in abundance. You could also wonder if this is like a lipidized dermatofibroma, a large example of a lipidized dermatofibroma like we see in the, in the lower leg near the ankle, so-called ankle type dermatofibroma. And you can have that coexist with hemosiderin-rich or hemorrhagic aneurysmal 
uh, dermatic fibroma. So I don't know for sure. I don't know the, the site on this one or the history, but I kind of wondered that because it has dense sclerotic collagen areas and, and uh, foamy looking cells in abundance. So it's another of the many, many different variations and flavors of dermatofibroma.